All right. So I think we are good to go. Right. So before starting our roadmap and uh, checking out the resources or talking about different stuff, like what should we do, uh, different concepts, like what is even in smart contract auditing or like why even smart contract writing? Like we'll, we'll be discussing all those topics. Uh, but first thing first, uh, I want to know uh, what is your background? Like if anyone is interested to chat over uh, their background or why they're interested into jumping into, let's say, a Web3 security or smart contract writing. Anyone? Felix, you want to uh, say something? Yeah, sure. Um, um, I don't know much about it yet, that's why. So mm -hmm. uh, I've looked into blockchain developing. Uh, okay. That seems very interesting. And of course, in uh, smart contract developing, auditing is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and some people have recommended me to look into it. So yeah, that's why. Got it, got it, got it. That's great. And anyone else uh, wants to put their opinions or they interest about it else we are good to go will the talk be recorded uh, yes I'm trying my best like if it works until the end all right uh, let me share my screen then and let's start it all right mm -hmm. Perfect. I hope it's visible. Anyone can give me a confirmation? Yes or no? Yes, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Perfect. All right. So before jumping into the roadmap, let's just first discuss what is even smart contract auditing. All right. So people are coming from the Web2 world or like who just want to start from scratch. Uh, let me just take all of them in. All right. Hi, Gabriel. How are you? Hi, Paul. All right. So uh, we have just started. So discussing about like what is even smart contract auditing, right? So smart contract, like people coming from the Web2 world, right? They have seen the development, right? Application development. They know certain factors and certain criteria, like how it actually works. Right, how it actually works in Web2. You go ahead, uh, you make a product, you deploy it, and it's done, right? And let's say some uh, on a random day, uh, critical exploit got discovered, right? And there's a chaos going on into your internal team, but you can still go ahead and write, uh, make some changes into your product, right? You still have the capabilities to go ahead and uh, I would say, find some security measures and still try to contain the attack that is still going and prevailing in the network, right? Or in the market, right? So things are like that in Web2. But in Web3, Web3 uh, things don't work like that, right? Because blockchain has some security measures implemented in it. And with that, the very critical and crucial aspect is the code deployed onto the chain should be mutable that means once you have that means once you have deployed uh your contract the codes are uh, uh, small applications under the blockchain are called as smart contracts so when you deploy a smart contract or your code or your small applications onto a blockchain that means it's immutable it's permanent right so imagine you have left a critical exploit into your code, right? You have no other option, right? You can't do anything. It will be there onto the blockchain permanently, right? So for that reason, we are supposed to have all kind of knowledge, right? And to, uh, yeah, to uh, prevent this kind of uh, uh, vectors as much as possible, right? To deploy, uh, to create safe code, right? So that is the important part and the auditing, the auditing of that code, or you can say finding bugs 
or resolving bugs uh, prior to the deployment of, uh, of that code or uh, client code, let's say a project is there, client wants to jump in, right? A uh, client is approaching you to uh, check their code and verify it is fine, right? It is fine to deploy whether there exists any kind of uh, crucial, critical uh, attack vectors, right? And uh, yeah, all for all those reasons, you as an auditor, go ahead, verify the code, test the metrics, test, uh, test the vectors, and try to uh, find as many bugs as possible, like, uh, like ask, uh, like if we connect to bug hunting, right? Bug hunting web too. Uh, many people are coming in, right? So, bug hunting in web too, right? So, what we do in bug hunting, we get a code, right? We try to find uh, as much as uh, as as much as many uh, bugs as possible, right? Uh, we try to secure the code as much as possible, right? So things like that. So things things work in that way. And it's pretty similar in to smart contract auditing and Web3 because you also have a code and you want to make sure prior to deployment, it is uh, as much secure as possible because nothing is guaranteed, right? So, but you try your best and try to find as many bugs as possible and try to make things secure. Perfect. Hi everyone, hi new joinees. Uh, we have just started and we are talking about why and uh, the what and why aspect of smart contract auditing, right? So we have just discussed what is smart contract auditing and why do we need it, right? So uh, just to summar uh, just summarizing, uh, what is smart contract auditing? So smart contract auditing is uh, you audit the code uh, or you can say smart contracts, which are uh, small applications of blockchain and you try to find bugs in them and try to uh, secure them as much as possible or prior to their deployment perfect so that's it so that's why we need a smart contract auditing and talking about i would say uh yes another uh, critical component right uh what is uh the money game right or like what is the payout right so if we talk about the payout, it's pretty much, uh, I would say 10x or 20x as compared to Web2. Uh, the reason is uh, larger the risk and larger the reward, right? Because the TVL locked and the protocols, uh, you can see the total value locked right, in the protocols are much higher, right? As compared to Web2. So that means there is uh, like the exploits we see, right? We see million dollars of hack, hundred million dollars of hack, billion dollars of hacks. So these kind of hacks. That that means these protocols have actually a lot of value, a lot of funds stored in uh, in them, and they can actually serve uh, a lot of uh, people and a lot of aspects in DeFi, right? So TVL is huge in Web three, and for the same reason, uh, you are supposed to get a lot of rewards, right? If you are able to, I would say. Uh, uh secure them right before any black hat uh going on and exploiting them right so things like that so that's why the payout is also pretty high as compared to web 2 and pretty lucrative right so these are the two aspects and talking about the third one right it's a new tech stack right it's a new tech stack and in web 3 we have seen uh, like a very, I uh, would say, needy component, which is removing the intermediaries, right? So I would say it's pretty important, right? It's pretty important to learn. And the reason is because it is serving a pur uh, purpose, right? It's serving a purpose, the Web3 serving a purpose, which we uh, always needed in Web2, uh, which is uh, the decentralization, right? So covering all those aspects, I would say I've covered the requirements as well, right? Why should be looking forward to smart contract auditing? Uh, so I hope that's clear. Uh, uh, any question till yet? Or we can move ahead. If anyone wants to have or ask any question, they can write it down in the chat or can simply turn on their mics. Else we can move ahead.
Perfect. All right. So now let's jump into the roadmap. All right. So the first thing first, uh, yes, I hope uh, the first thing that I'm assuming is everyone is having at least uh, the basic knowledge of blockchain, right? How it works and uh, I would say different basic concepts, right? Blockchain. Uh, if not, anyone can go ahead and just search it on YouTube and cover up a quick, uh, quick blockchain course, right? To, to get an understanding of uh, all the fundamentals, right, in the blockchain. So that will be fine. And uh, yes, all right, I don't know, it's pretty late for them. All right, so uh, after them, uh, once you are done with the basic concept, uh, conceptual knowledge of blockchain, that means you know how a blockchain works, different uh, components, right, like miners and a bunch of stuff, right? With that, we can actually start our smart contract journey. And I would say the giant in this space is still Ethereum, right? The smart contract, uh, like anyone uh, want to, uh, I would say, become a smart contract writer, they can start with Ethereum. And I would say Ethereum is the perfect starting point, right? And uh, the reason is because uh, they have a well set up environment. They are doing great. They have a lot of purpose to serve. Uh, they were started pretty early and uh, a lot of, I would say, projects are there built on uh, Ethereum, right? So you have a lot of scope, right, to work on Ethereum. So Ethereum is the perfect way, uh, perfect point to start. So the first thing first, you're supposed to know the fundamentals of Ethereum itself, right? So there is a book uh, called Ethereum book uh, on GitHub. The name is Mastering Ethereum, right? So this is the perfect book to start with. Mastering Ethereum covers, I would say, uh, almost everything. Uh, right. So almost everything uh, regarding to, uh, re uh, yeah, almost everything in Ethereum. Uh, like uh, what are the wallets? What are the tr transactions? Uh, how does Ethereum works? Uh, different clients. Even there are chapters on solidity and security as well, right? So people don't know about uh, uh, security, uh, sorry, solidity. Solidity is the uh, high level language, uh, one of the high level language to code smart contracts, or you can say applications on to Ethereum. So there are chapters uh, for them as well, but we'll be covering all these uh, stuff in detail, right? So the first starting point is mastering Ethereum, right? covering all the details because uh, right how you would be able to uh, find bugs if you don't know how the ethereum works right so that is the very uh, i would say fundamental thing that is required for everyone to learn so this is the first thing and um, moving back now let's say we have covered the ethereum book right now we know uh, hi everyone, uh, the new join is we have just started and covered what is the smart, what is smart contract writing and why do we even know uh, or why do we even need smart contract writing, just the basic deals and yes, and moving on to we have just started our roadmap, uh, what should be the uh, journey, what should be our journey, our starting writing. So mastering Ethereum is the first point where everyone should start and learn different concepts of Ethereum. Uh, once done, uh, you can start reading about the consensus algorithm, right? The reason is uh, because proof of work, uh, uh, Ethereum, uh, Ethereum 1 right now, uh, is a proof of work based uh, EVM chain, right? But there are other consensus algorithms as well, like proof of stake, proof of stake authority, and a couple of uh, others as well. So why do we need to learn those uh, consensus algorithms? The reason is uh, we won't be working on just one chain, right? As an auditor, you are supposed to work and have a knowledge of, I would say, uh, different chains. So as this is your starting point, you're not supposed to, I would say, uh, bang your head on uh, like a lot of different chains. No, just 
uh, stick to Ethereum and Binance, right? So let me just write it down. Uh, stick to uh, Ethereum and Binance here because you don't need uh, to run everywhere, right? So proof of work for Ethereum, I would say. Right, proof of stake for Binance. Binance Smart Chain. Right. So you need to have the knowledge of these two uh, chains, uh, like how uh, how do they work? Uh, yeah, just just simple as that. How do they uh, how do they work? Uh, that's enough. Right. So the reason is uh, some bugs uh, as an auditor some bugs are actually related to the network itself that means they are not related to uh just the code that means you cannot do uh auditing of the same see uh when you audit uh, you are restricted to solidity right solidity is the uh, high level language but sometimes and some bugs are actually not related to solidity they are actually dependent upon the network itself right let's say uh, some bugs are actually specific to ethereum some bugs are specific to other uh, consensus algorithms like how do they work so we have to analyze uh, like uh, let's say right now i'm working on our ethereum project right i'm working on a uh, yes ethereum project and i found a box which is actually related to or i would say specific to ethereum consensus right ethereum i would say proof of work but another project that I'm working on is related to proof of stake. But in that, uh, that bug that I found on Ethereum is actually not viable because proof of stake has a different implementation and does not actually allow uh, that kind of bugs, right? So in order to, uh, for me to understand, I have to have the knowledge of both of the chains, right? How do they work? Uh, the implementation, right? Things like that, the basic uh, fundamentals, right? So these are the two things. Now we know uh, the internals of Ethereum, uh, the consensus algorithm, the proof of stake and proof of work, right? Now we can go ahead and learn about Solidity, right? Solidity is the language that we code our smart contracts. So now there's a need to know and learn Solidity, right? So what are the good resources that we can use, right? So the first one is the Solidity Docs itself, right? So in Solidity Docs, uh, there is a lot of information, a lot of, lot of information, but you're not supposed to learn uh, each and everything just going here. Just start with the layouts, right? What is the layout of a Solidity file? Like just the fundamentals, right? You're, sub you're just starting with Solidity, right? No need to, I would say, uh, deep dive into all of the docs and study all of them at once. There's no need. You will be learning all of them one by one as you grow, right? So that is one thing. But these are the basics that you should be knowing, like uh, how does the uh, how does a Solidity contract looks like? What are the key components, right? What is the structure of a contract, right? and yes things like that so once you are done uh with i would say uh these stuff like uh state variable you can now actually learn uh the different components from here as well but uh, let's have uh more uh, more visual resources right so once you're done uh not done you this is something you're supposed to follow uh throughout your journey of solidity uh, you will be uh, required to go back and forth to this document. Uh, you will be required in future, uh, like if, if you're not able to understand something, you can always come up here and start reading about that, right? Uh, the second best resource is the Smart Contract Programmer. This video I'm going to... Right? So there's a YouTube channel uh, uh, called the Smart Contract Programmer. And there is a playlist of you solidity 0 0.8 right okay everyone everyone is you're pretty late uh but it's fine uh, i hope the recording is still working all right 
So, uh, Solidity 0.8, uh, there is a playlist covering different key components of Solidity, right? What you're supposed to learn, uh, the state variables, functions, and all the components that is there in Solidity. What is 0 0.8? Uh, well, Solidity has uh, different versions. And actually, these are released uh, time to time uh, because the developers uh, fix some implementation bugs or I would say other other kind of stuff, uh, gas optimizations and add new features uh, in newer versions. So 0 0.8 is the latest version. And to be honest, the concepts uh, and most of the things uh, will remain the same, will stay the same for, I would say throughout the, like if you, if you talk about the backward compatibility, uh, with 0 0.5, 6, 7, right? Uh, all the previous version. These will stay the same. The con uh, the components and concepts will stay the same. Uh, it will just be some additional features, I would say, uh, that you're supposed to learn. Uh, I will tell you where you can actually uh, go and find those as well. So this is the one that you're supposed to learn. Uh, like uh, this is the playlist where you're supposed to learn already. Going back, and what else do I need, right? So right now, uh, let's, after finishing uh, all of these resources, right now you will be having sufficient knowledge, right, uh, of Solidity. Then what you're supposed to do is go to Securium Bootcamp, right, and mm -hmm. connect your missing dots. So what is a Securium Bootcamp? Right. So what? Uh, what is a Securium Bootcamp? Actually, Securium Bootcamp uh, was organized by Rajiv. Uh, he's a well-known security researcher and uh, sponsored by, I would say, there were, there were multiple teams, Consensus, Diligence, Trail of Bits, Sigma Prime, multiple uh, sponsors were there. So uh, this is a very uh, well-curated content, right, on Solidity. So once you're done, once you understand what is Solidity and you are done with this playlist, you know different components of Solidity, you can come up here and start reading Solidity 101 and Solidity 201, right? And connect your missing doubts. Connect your missing, uh, I would say, dots and connect your missing doubts. I would say anything that you missed uh, from this uh, playlist or from whatever you have learned up till now, this is the moment where you can actually uh, connect everything up, right? Uh, anything that you are missing uh, or, or anything uh, that you are not uh, not not yet learned uh, right now up till up till yet, you can go ahead and learn all the stuff, right? So there's a bunch of information uh, covered about Solidity and different aspects, right? So after finishing Solidity 101 and Solidity 201, you will be having all the uh, required information, I would say, uh, to code in Solidity, right? To code in Solidity. And uh, with that, you can actually uh, make uh, your own, create your own uh, applications. And uh, you will be uh, very well uh, set up to understand uh, Solidity code and find bugs, right? Uh, I would not say uh, you will be ready for bugs, but still uh, you will be uh, able to find implementation errors, right, in other codes. So at this point, uh, you will be at this stage. What else do we need, right? The second component, I would say the other thing, and that is very much required is testing, right? So testing is where you check code, uh, I would say, for errors or I would say even the functionality, right? So this is uh, moreover called as functionality testing. So let's say uh, you have a contract, right? You have a function which is actually adding up uh, uh, or let's say which is actually subtracting, right? One value from another, right? So now you're supposed to check, uh, like will it work uh, fine for any of the two uh, two input parameters chosen, right? Or can it give me any kind of error, right? If I if I pass in a certain kind of parameter, right? So we kind of know that if we subtract larger value from a smaller a smaller value, 
uh, there can be some errors, right? Because, uh, uh, yeah, in certain conditions, right, there can be some error. Like, because this is called as underflow. And underflow is actually not related to just solidity. Underflows are there in other uh, languages as well. Uh, so uh, let's let's take an example. Let's say I have chosen a space, uh, integer space, like uh, let's say unsigned one, right? So I've chosen a positive space. And uh, so with the positive uh, space, uh, we know that it cannot store any negative value, right? So let's say if I'm subtracting two from five, that means three, right? Three is fine, it's the positive value and we can store it. But what if we do, if we subtract five from two, right? People are still coming in, all right. So hi everyone, hi new joinees. Uh, we are covering up the roadmap. So we have just covered uh, these three points. So I hope the recording is still going on. And uh, I hope, yeah, I will be sharing this document uh, at the end of the chat. So you can go through and follow along. All right, so it's talking about uh, testing and uh, what do we know, or what do we need, right? and the smart contract testing and uh, we were we were following the example right so five uh yeah if we subtract two from five that is three so that is fine that is fine to store uh in the positive space or you can say uh done signed space which is able to handle the positive values what but what if we subtract five from two right it will be negative three so can unsigned space store this value? No, right? Because it can only store a positive value. So what can be the results? The results can be either I should, I would say, not take this value, not store this value and uh, do something kind of uh, errors, right? Do, do propose some errors. Or the other thing that can happen, it actually stores negative uh, three, but actually by wrapping it up. Right. By wrapping it up means using some other values, right? Or you can say uh, wrapping around to the highest values, right? So these kind of errors, right? We need to understand, right? We need to understand these kind of errors, we need, and we are supposed to test these kind of errors, right? So the best way is to have a knowledge or understanding of a testing framework, right? So I would say hard hat, right? Hard hat is the uh, is one of the I would say very popular and uh, widely used I would say testing uh, you can use hard hat in testing you can use it in development as well so hard hat is widely used for that and uh, within it we can use uh, the testing frameworks like uh, we can use uh, Mocha Chai Ether Church JS right so they can use them and uh get our game strong of hard at because that is a necessity right that is a necessity you can always go ahead and test your contracts in remix right but remix is i would say don't give you all the features and functionalities right it is just there uh, i would say uh, to test some basic features test some basic contracts and some basic input parameters but not not i would say for uh big wide projects for complicated projects or things like that so how that is a requirement and everyone is supposed to learn you can always go ahead and choose truffle as well so truffle is also an alternative uh, a kind of testing framework but i would recommend harder because harder is pretty easy uh to set up pretty easy to work upon right so you can go ahead and learn harder so what are the best resources i would say the best resources are, first of all, the hard hat documentation itself, right? So there are some uh, supporting, I would say, examples given uh, to quickly get a head start of how to set up a hard hat project and how to set up ethos.js for testing, right? Another good, uh, I would say, a very good blog uh, covering end-to-end -end details is by Better Programming Hub, right? By Better Programming Hub. So it's called as Complete Hands-On Hard Hat Tutorial. I've added a link in this markdown and it covers uh, probably everything, right?
from start to finish, right? Like what is hard hat, the architecture of hard hat, uh, how you should be setting up your project into hard hat, uh, your configurations, your testing as well, right? So all of these resources uh, will actually help you uh, like a lot. And just quickly uh, uh, getting started up with uh, smart contract testing, right? So at this point, you know Solidity, you know smart contract testing. It means you're able to understand code, you're able to uh, find implementation errors, you're able to understand uh, different components of Solidity, and you're also able to test smart contract uh, functions and features, right? So you are at a very good stage right now. So now we are supposed to grow with the required things, right? What else is required uh, to be a smart contract writer? Or when you uh, get your first job, uh, what they will be expecting from you, right? So the other thing is to have a knowledge of ERC standards, right? ERC or as we have started with Binance as well, right? We at the start, we uh, we taken a note that proof of work and proof of stake, uh, an example, which is Binance Smart Chain, uh, are, are some very popular, I would say, uh, uh, chains. Uh, and uh, there, there, there comes a lot of uh, projects on top uh, and uh, like build on top of them. So we're supposed to have the knowledge of uh, these two uh, chains uh, at our very starting journey, right? So, so considering that, we can have the knowledge of ERC standards and BEP standards. So ERC standards, I would say just some special uh, token standards or there are a couple of more standards as well, but there are a couple of token standards that are being followed under the Ethereum chain and which actually serves as very special purpose, right? These are security tokens, utility tokens, right? So the knowledge of these are also very uh, required and you're supposed to have, right? So you can always go ahead and read about ERC-20, what is ERC-20, right? And there will be a couple of blogs, like let's say this is from Ethereum itself, ERC-20. I've actually, uh, uh, yes, this is the one. Okay, so I've added something. So uh, ERC standards, right? So Ethereum has actually written a very good blog, covers uh, some of the well-known, right? Covers some of the well-known uh, contracts. Uh, 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 where it is, where it is, where it is, where it is. yeah. So it covers ERC20, ERC721, 777, and 1155. So ERC20 uh, is a standard for fungible tokens, right? Uh, that means the tokens which actually can be interchanged for one to another. ERC721 are the non-fungible token, the NFT standard, right? And there are a couple of a uh, couple more standards as well which we need to understand the reason is uh, like uh, assume you will uh, you got a, a project around erc i would say uh, nft right you got an nft project to audit then you are supposed to have the knowledge of erc 721 right which is a is nft standard so that way you will be able to i would say uh find bugs around let's say uh whether the standard is implemented correctly or not right uh, you got a project from someone some some project team and you found out that uh let, let's talk about erc20 right you, you got a token you got a erc20 erc20 token and you found out that uh, uh, that the required functions are not there right they have not implemented the required function so you can actually tell them that your token is actually not ERC-20 compatible. That's actually not an ERC-20 token, right? So these are the stuff that you're supposed to know. And that actually uh, increases your audit finding knowledge, right? What you're supposed to find in your audits, right? So uh, keep that in mind. So that is one thing. So these are some of the standards which are supposed to have. So any question uh, till yet? from anyone now we can proceed can anyone write yes or no all right all right 
All right. All right. Thank you so much, guys. So, uh, yes, we have covered the ERC standards as well till now. And yes, uh, you must be familiar, like uh, who are actually into the domain, that there is something called as Open Zeppelin, right? So Open Zeppelin is, I would say, uh, an organization uh, which has actually built some helpful libraries and contracts to help in our development, right? In our development, like, uh, what do I mean with that, right? Let's say you are building a NFT contract. Right? Let's say you are supposed to build a NFT project, and you're supposed to write uh, all the requirements that are there for for it to become a ERC seven twenty one compliant, right? Compliant projects. So you will be writing uh, the functions one by one and making the projects by yourself. The open supplement contracts are actually some helper libraries and some uh, boilerplate code, you can say. So you can actually import these contracts and make some slight changes according to your need, according to your project, and just be done with it, right? So let's just take an example. You're building an ERC20 token, right? So you can just import uh, the ERC20 contract and just change uh, you can say or you can just pass in your uh, desired requirements and this will create a erc20 token for you right so summarizingly you're not supposed to write the complete code by yourself you're just supposed to write uh, the specific component the custom code for your contract rest will be done rest will be done by uh, the uh, contracts uh, the open zeppelin contracts themselves right so uh, that's one thing. So you're supposed to have open Zeppelin. Uh, you can always go ahead, right? Refer to open Zeppelin contract because that will be helping you most of the time in your development. And uh, most of the project team, there are, the second reason is why these open Zeppelin contracts are popular, so popular, because these are audited. These are audited by well-known uh, uh, researchers, well-known auditing firms, uh, multiple times right so that's why you can actually uh trust these contracts right trust these contracts before importing into your uh custom code right so this is one thing uh what else do we have uh we have yes so now we have uh, a knowledge of open zeppelin as well as a requirement so now what we have uh understood we know solidity we understood smart contract testing as well. And we understood the ERC standards. We understood the open Zeppelin contracts, right? Which can actually help me to write these kind of standards as well, right? So now we know uh, what should be uh, the primary requirement, right? So this covers my first stage. Now I'm growing my knowledge, right? So once this is done, now it's supposed to have the upgradable contract, the knowledge of upgradable contract. This can be covered, I would say, in, in, in just a day or two, right? But this is a requirement. So upgradable contracts, what are actually upgradable contracts? So technically, it's just a piece of code, right? It's just solidity. But logically, upgradable contract means, uh, uh, let's say you have a contract and at some point of time, uh, you found, okay, there is some bug in my contract and you can actually go ahead and redeploy your contract, right? With redeploying, uh, there's a technical, there's some techni technicalities, right? It's not just simply uh, go ahead and redeploy a contract because we discussed in the very uh, beginning that the code is immutable, right? The code is immutable. That means you cannot uh, go ahead and go ahead and change your code right so but upgradable contracts uh, actually allow you some logical way to go ahead and uh, change your contract implementation uh, uh, so that thing we are supposed to learn and a very cool resource is from the smart contract program itself the open zeppelin right we have to utilize this channel 
you have to utilize the smart contract program my youtube channel as much as possible like all the playlists it have all the videos uh it's having so uh, this video will cover up uh what are actually upgradable contracts and the next one which will actually cover up uh, what are the risks uh are that are involved around open zeppelin contracts uh sorry upgradable contracts right so with that you would be having the knowledge of what are upgradable contracts and what are the risks involved around upgradable contracts the reason uh, uh we are supposed to know these kind of stuff and we're supposed to know upgradable contracts because the protocols uh coming up right now these days they are very much i would say uh not sure uh, because as you all know there are always a risk of uh, uh, undiscovered bugs that can be found so what they do they create uh their highly i would say uh risk involved contracts and make them uh, upgradable right they, they make uh, uh the most risky i would say contracts upgradable so as to upgrade them later if found any bugs right so in those kind of projects or contract we are supposed to have the knowledge of upgradable contracts how do they work and what are the risks that can be there uh while upgrading your contracts right so this is the one so now we have covered uh, most of solidity most of testing and uh, all of the information and all the knowledge required to go ahead and now attack stuff right so now we are working as an offensive uh offensive solidity uh, i would say auditor now we are not just learning solidity we will be learning how to uh, find bugs right we'll be learning how to find bugs and how to attack uh, smart contract right the offensive stuff so now we are supposed to learn what are the actual pitfalls right what are uh, what are the uh, bugs right what are the vectors in solidity right what we are supposed to find uh, in smart contracts so you can actually follow security pitfalls 101 and security pitfalls 201 from securium itself so again a well curated content you can actually and this will actually help you uh to connect your solidity dots with the bugs that you can find right so with that yes scable so has written uh has shared a link that you can uh, go ahead and read about it right so this is one uh what else yes security pitfalls 101 and 201 so this actually covers uh, what are the problematic stuff in Solidity? Or you can say, uh, what are the bugs that we are supposed to report uh, in a Solidity project, right? So different, different stuff uh, that you can report and that can actually result into a flaw, right? So there can be an implementation flaw. Let's say uh, you have misused a Solidity implementation or a logical flaw as well, right? So different kind of stuff. And this will actually cover the bugs around different standards as well right remember uh, in our roadmap we have also learned the different standards now these pitfalls actually cover what can be different bugs around those standards as well right so these are from erc20 erc721 and like 777 right so if you're not implementing these uh, standards or even you're not writing a proper solidity uh, code you're supposed to have these kind of uh you will uh, fall into trouble and you will always increase risk to have these kind of bugs right so with that we'll be having the knowledge of what kind of bugs that can be there and what kind of bugs that we can report in a solidity based project right by covering solidity uh, security pitfalls 101 and 201 adding to this knowledge uh i hope uh, this will cover most of the things uh in solidity but even though uh we can go ahead and go to sw3 registry right so it contains the weaknesses again the weaknesses and uh the vectors that can be there around a solidity based project so this is you are supposed to learn right go ahead and just click on let's say uh let's let's pick up one uh mm, mm, let's let's take a good one mm -hmm. let's take signature malleability swc117 
So it actually gives you all the information, right? What is the uh, like uh, bug all about? Uh, what could be a remediation, right? Uh, any references, right? So it covers a uh, uh, CDF challenge, right? It covers a CDF challenge as a reference. And there are some examples, right? Uh, example of a vulnerable contract where you can find or you can observe this kind of behavior, right? So this is very helpful for you to understand different different kind of uh, vectors, right? Different different kind of stuff, uh, vulnerable implementation and stuff like that. So you can go ahead and, and uh, learn from it. What else? Then there's again a very good resource uh, playlist, another playlist by Smart Contract Programmer. Hey everyone. Right. Uh, and the playlist is called as Hack Solidity. So where uh, he actually uh, gives you uh, gives you a gives you a walkthrough. Hey everyone, hi new joinees. So we are kind currently uh, discussing over the roadmap, and we have covered a lot of stuff in the beginning. Uh, after this, uh, I'll be just giving a quick summary. So uh, yes, now we are talking about the hacks already, right? So in this uh, playlist, he actually covers uh, multiple attack vectors and gives you, uh, I would say, uh, information about the attack vector itself and how to actually, uh, I would say, attack those kind of uh, vectors or find those kind of vectors, right? So let's take, uh, okay, reinference. Reinference is a very popular one. So if we play this video, right? So here he's actually explaining how reinference works. And yes, here and here he's actually coding something, right? To uh, to, uh, to help you able to understand how reinference uh, behaves, right? How you're supposed to observe these kind of patterns, right? In a smart contract. And then uh, it actually shows you uh, how it looks like to attack a reinference uh, vector. Similarly, there are attack vectors like underflows, overflows, uh, forcefully send ethers, and a couple of them. So there are multiple uh, vectors that he has actually uh, consolidated uh, and made a playlist. So you can actually uh, refer to these, and this will actually help you a lot in your auditing journey, right? So right now, uh, we have covered the offensive stage as well. Right now, we know Solidity. We know how to test our Solidity code. We know how to attack the Solidity code as well. So just a summarization, just a quick summarization. You're supposed to have, you're supposed to start with mastering Ethereum, where you will be covering all the internal details of Ethereum itself, because that's why, because it is important, uh, because Ethereum is uh, the giant right now, and uh, multiple, I would say, uh, the highest number of protocols and projects are deployed onto the Ethereum. So Ethereum is the must to learn. And with that knowledge, we will be having uh, all the uh, EBM based information, right, to cover all the simple chains as well. So you can actually carry forward this knowledge with other chains as well. And then you can have proof of work and proof of stake based chains. Uh, you can just take two at the moment, Ethereum and Binance and go ahead and learn about how these different consensus algorithms work right uh, to to work on multiple chains not just restricted to ethereum right in your thing journey then you're supposed to have the solidity fundamentals and the knowledge all about it from solidity docs youtube channel smart contract programmer from the securium boot camps right after that you're supposed to have the testing information and testing knowledge right you are supposed to test uh, while auditing you are supposed to write your uh, cases, test cases to present in your audit report. So with that, you're supposed to have the knowledge of at least one framework and uh, one testing framework and uh, yeah, th things like that. So Harded is one, uh, which I recommend and you can all follow uh, with ethers.js, uh, Mocha Chai testing framework. This will help you. Uh, then we have the sta uh, standards, ERC-20, ERC-721, 777, 1155. These are the most popular ones at the moment and the basic requirement that you're supposed to know. So ERC standards, uh, you can follow this block covered by Ethereum itself. 
and you will be having all the information required to understand these ERC standards. Then we are supposed to know the Open Zeppelin. There are a couple of a couple more uh, organizations uh, which follow the same or allow uh, the same kind of helper libraries to be imported. But Open Zeppelin is the popular one. So we'll start with Open Zeppelin because we are just starting our journey. So Open Zeppelin helper help libraries, uh, something you're supposed to just quickly go through and uh, have, a, I would say, a basic understanding, right? Because this can help actually help you uh, in your developer journey as well, right? And uh, as most of the protocols use Open Zeppelin boilerplate, so by having a knowledge of Open Zeppelin uh, contracts, you will be able to quickly identify uh, which code is a boilerplate code and you're not supposed to, I would say, uh, invest much of your time because that code is already being audited uh, or was already audited by uh, many good auditing firms. So you're supposed to invest your time in custom code, right? Which is unique. So after then, you are supposed to have the knowledge of upgradable contracts. Uh, that is again a crucial factor. And uh, as most of the protocols are relying upon upgradable contracts, you're supposed to have the knowledge of upgradable contracts and the risk involved in that. Then we are supposed to know uh, the attack vectors that are involved in solidity, right? Uh, we can uh, refer to the Securium 101 and 201, the SWC registry. And again, uh, one of the coolest channel uh, from a smart contract programmer, HackSolid. Right? So now you are having all the knowledge required uh, to, I would say, go ahead and practice something, right? Because you just learn something, but you never tried by yourself, right? So you cannot, I would say, uh, grow until and unless you try create the same attack vector, right? Code a contract, code a vulnerable contract, try to attack by yourself, right? That's the proper way to learn something, right? So for that, you can always refer to some existing and some very well, uh, well known uh, CDFs available around Solidity. So this is a CDF repository covers uh, this is a Peter's, uh, uh, P, uh, this is Peter's uh, repository. Uh, Peter, Peter is also a very uh, well-known security researcher in the uh, blockchain space. So he has actually uh, 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 written down uh, all the available uh, CDFs and written down as a markdown. So you can always follow them. But as we are starting, we are not supposed to go into each and everything right but two of the most important ones are ethernaut and capture the ether so these kind uh, these two uh, uh, cdf uh, platforms are uh, i would say curated in such a way to help you understand one attack vector at a time and it actually covers challenges around uh, i would say most of the attack vectors uh, that are there in solidity Right. So these are, I would say, the best resource uh, to practice your knowledge that you have uh, learned till yet, that you have got till yet. So either or not, you can, uh, if you can solve it by yourself, that is fine. Try your best to solve a challenge by yourself. If not, you can always uh, Google it down the walkthroughs uh, written down by other people and learn from them. Right. So now we have, I would say, uh, made our... Uh, solidity game a lot stronger actually yet but is solidity enough uh, i would say to be a smart contract auditor no the recent exploits that are growing up are not from the solidity space but are just uh but are from DeFi exploits as well DeFi space as well so what is DeFi? DeFi, i would say uh as contrary to c5 centralized finance as protocols are coming up onto the chain, onto the decentralized uh, network, they are trying to build the same strategies of C5 centralized finance on the decentralized network. That means uh, the intermediaries are being removed and uh, the components are now being dependent upon the algorithms as well, right? I would say, yes. So there are decentralized exchanges, uh, they are, which are based on just 
smart contracts or you can say just a piece of code is covering your entire DeFi journey, right? Entire DeFi, I would say, whether you want to swap one token, whether you want to trade one token, you want to be a, a provider of a pool, right? So all those stuffs are being covered by the smart contract itself, right? But uh, you must be wondering, okay, so this is again a piece of code, right? But yeah, that is fine. But there is another very critical component that is the financial uh, uh, vector, right? The financial vector that comes from this protocols, right? So it's not just solidity. You can actually exploit uh, the finances, right? Like how you would be, uh, you can actually do uh, market manipulation. So market manipulation is kind of attack vector in DeFi. So with market manipulation, what you're doing, you're actually not attacking the protocol itself. You're attacking the component, how it's actually trading, right? how it's being built, how it's actually interacting with the third party protocol. So things like that. So for that, you're supposed to have a knowledge of DeFi as well, like how DeFi works in, uh, in blockchain, right? So the best resources out there that I found as the Finematics on uh, YouTube, Binance. right? So Finematics on YouTube. Uh, there's a playlist uh, called as DeFi. So he covers uh, different, like I would say he has covered most of the stuff uh, that are currently there in DeFi ecosystem. Uh, and he actually explains in a very uh, simple, uh, simplistic manner by animating stuff and very easy to uh, grasp, right? So this is something that you are supposed to follow as as you're growing uh, with your journey. You're not supposed to complete in a day, right? That's not needed. But yes, you're supposed to have the understanding of how DeFi works and some knowledge of some well-known protocols that are there on the blockchain, right? Uniswap is there, uh, Uniswap B2, V3, Compound, Curve. These are some of the protocols that you're supposed to learn their working, right? You're supposed to know how these protocols actually work, what is the mechanics behind them, that will actually help you to understand what should be the bug that can happen or what can I report uh, if I found a protocol, if I found a contract uh, to audit and if, what should I be reporting, right? And these kind of protocols, right? Let's say you got a contract which is actually trading right trading with the uniswap right trading one token to another with uniswap now what you're supposed to check right that whether this implementation is uh, i would i would say whether, whether this uh, this thing this logic is implemented correctly or not right so all those stuff can only be reported if you will be having the knowledge of uh, the protocol itself right so i think uh, finamatics has covered them you can always go ahead and check and if you don't find them good you can always uh, google down more resources so that is fine and then smart contract programmer also has a DeFi Hello playlist today I'm gonna show you. right so it also has uh, covered a lot of stuff a lot of protocols like UNICEF v2 curve Aave, dydx compound right so um, many of the information uh like i would say much of uh these videos are very uh, very informative uh, informative and can help you a lot in your journey in your DeFi uh knowledge right so with that uh as we are growing with our DeFi knowledge now we are supposed to know the DeFi attack vectors as well right now we understand how DeFi works but we are also supposed to find the DeFi attack vectors right so this is, I would say, the DeFi stage, uh, the DeFi attack vectors is, you can say, uh, stage two. Uh, you can say a little intermediate stage where now you have sufficient knowledge of Solidity and you are uh, now finding bugs of Solidity, but you are supposed to grow, right? And as everyone is expected and as every auditor is expected to find DeFi bugs as well. So that's when you are supposed to enhance your knowledge and learn about DeFi and keep learning about DeFi, right? Because it's not a one-shot uh, knowledge you're supposed to learn every day. So these are some of the very known, uh, well-known attack vectors. I've not attached a link, 
because uh, there are multiple resources you're supposed to learn on your own pace, right? At which stage you are, so accordingly you're supposed to learn uh, what is a flash loan, price oracle manipulation, front running, and there's a dependent attack or as called a sandwich attack. There are rug pulls as well that are going on DeFi system, which are attack vectors uh, by themselves. And example is unlimited token allowance, right? So things like that. So these are some of the attack vectors that, that you're supposed to know and have the knowledge of, right? So once you're done with that, once you have this sufficient knowledge, then you can actually practice the CTS around DeFi, right? So there is a very popular one, uh, damn vulnerable DeFi. So damn vulnerable DeFi covers some challenges that can that you can actually try your best to solve them. If you're not able to, if you're not able to solve them, you can always go ahead and read walkthroughs. So this repository uh, that we have uh, that I've shared actually covers some write-ups as well, some walkthroughs as well of DeFi, uh, damn vulnerable DeFi, which you can actually refer and get a knowledge from them. So this is the one. Any uh, any question till yet? Are we are good? Mm -hmm. Any yes or no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, internship opportunities are available for college students. Yes, definitely. Definitely uh, these are available. And we'll be talking about that as well. So uh, CDFs, we have covered CDFs. What else? So at this stage, uh, we can, I would say, we can call ourselves an auditor, right? At this stage, we are actually an auditor because we know about solidity. We can, uh, I would say, uh, find solidity bugs. We know about DeFi as well. Uh, not that much uh, because uh, these things we are covering as uh, like uh, on a regular basis, right? Uh, they're not supposed to, I would say, these are not a prerequisite to grow. Uh, okay. Someone join. Okay. Hi, Saurabh. You joined pretty late. All right. So, uh, Deepa, so at this stage, so this is supposed to learn on a regular basis, not a prerequisite to grow or to continue. Uh, so this is supposed to learn on a daily basis. You're supposed to uh, watch videos over DeFi, learn more uh, protocols, as many as possible, right? Uh, learn on a, on a random day, a random attack vector, right? Uh, maybe practice them uh, on a damn vulnerable DeFi, right? So these are the stuff that you're supposed to uh, learn as uh, as you grow, right? But at this point, we can call ourselves a smart contract auditor, right? Because if, if given a project, we can find bugs in that and we can actually uh, find good bugs in them, right? Not very, uh, those kind of bugs like low hanging fruits, like low severity ones, no. We can actually find some very good, uh, high, medium, critical severity bugs in them. And also some DeFi attack vectors as well, because now we have made up a mindset to find logical bugs. Like what can be, uh, I would say, the financial attack vectors behind a project, the business logic flaws, right? Uh, around a specific project. So at this stage, we are a smart contract writer. Now, what should be my, I would say, uh, carry forward journey? I would say, how should I carry forward my knowledge from here, right? So on a regular basis, what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to read post -mortems, right? Because we know uh if you if you're on active if you if you're active on twitter you must be seeing a lot of attacks uh happening every week every month or even daily right so how you're supposed to enhance your knowledge at from this stage uh we are actually able to understand DeFi and solidity bugs you're supposed to read post-mortems right let's say a uh, attack happened on sushi swap and there are some post-mortems written by uh, some well-known teams and organizations, right? Like even if I block sec, uh, slow miss, go on to these uh, these organizations, medium blogs, uh, wherever they write their stuff and uh, uh, read about that, right? Read about the attack that happened in the past. And once done, you can actually have, uh, you can actually go ahead and try to 
recreate the same scenario as well right because why not because i right now i have this knowledge of smart contract testing and i can create the uh exploit scenario by myself right because why not so these are some of the uh, well known teams uh, which actually uh, writes uh, which actually write um, uh, the uh, the blogs right around the blogs uh, around the attacks that happen so imnify is one block sec is one slow mist is one Rect news is one and these are two well known security researchers as well who uh write on twitter uh, they uh, they create threads uh if anything uh they found or anything uh that just happened over a protocol that they recently discovered right so they write their own threads as well on twitter so it's a must to follow uh these researchers and there are many more as well you will uh, be yourself finding those researchers once you uh, stay active on twitter right so these are the stuff right so what else what else uh, uh, can be done to enhance my auditing knowledge right because right now i'm an auditor right right now i've successfully started my journey as an auditor so security auditing uh, audit findings 101 and 201 are again a curated content by securium uh, covered some cool bugs from the reports uh, generated by some of the giants in this space, some of the, some of the well-known auditing firms like Consensus, Trail of Bits, Sigma Prime, right? So it covers 101 and 201. So basically uh, something around 200 bucks, uh, some uh, well -known, uh, not well-known, uh, some of the, I would say, uh, critical bugs that will actually help you make up your mindset how to approach a specific function or a specific contract right if there is a, a similar kind of logic found in a contract that you can actually use this knowledge from these reports and recreate uh, the same scenarios and try to find out whether uh, the similar kind of bug exists in the same function or not right so these uh, uh, this knowledge from the reports, auditing reports, uh, actually help you to enhance, right, your auditing knowledge. So these are some of them. Trail of bits, consensus, open zeppelin, uh, collides. So just go ahead and read reports. Once you're done, once you're having enough knowledge, go ahead and read reports from them to uh, learn about stuff. So after this, uh, we are mostly done. Now uh, let's talk about some of the tools, some of the automated tools uh, that are covered in auditing. There are uh, a bunch of tools uh, that different organizations use. Uh, some of them are their own proprietary internal tools. Uh, some of them are open source, which are being used uh, very uh, widely in most of the audits. So uh, VS Code is not a tool. VS Code is an ID, but it's very uh, helpful and uh, uh, you will find it very handy while uh, testing code or writing code. So VS Code ID, you can something that uh, you can choose. Slither is a static analysis tool. So it can help you to discover some uh, low hanging bugs or something that you have missed uh, while doing uh, the manual review. Right, so this can be very much helpful. Same goes for Mitral and Mitex. Mitex is a service, so you're supposed to have a paid account. I would say this is developed by Consensus, but uh, it's a very good tool and helps you find a lot of stuff. Mitral is again uh, open source that you can use. Uh, Akedna, Akedna is a fuzzer that you can use while testing. So let's say you have a function and you want to test uh for a couple of parameters but uh like let's say 100 or even thousand right so in order to do that akitna comes very handy because you obviously you won't be going out and writing test cases for those hundreds uh hundred and thousand uh parameters right so that is one thing and what else that we can do in uh, uh as to continue our learning is to follow newsletters right Block threat is again uh, created by 
uh, Peter, Peter I. Felix. So he covers uh, what is going on actually in the space. Uh, the attack vectors like a random protocol could hack. What was the reason? Things like that. So that is uh, uh, we, that that is something that we can follow, right? And we are supposed to follow because, uh, as I said, it's not a one shot knowledge. Uh, once uh, one learn, once learned and uh, will be uh, forever. It's not like that. You're supposed to learn on a uh, like on a regular basis uh, every day, like because attack vectors are being found every day and patches are being used every day. Right? So we are supposed to learn and enhance our knowledge uh, like day by day. So you're supposed to uh, follow newsletters. What else we can follow? We can follow some very good communities, right? Uh, to have discussions, right? Let's say you found a vector and you're not pretty much sure, right? How to approach this one or what can be done around this uh, attack vector how to even attack a specific logic of function right what could be the possible flaws in a function right so for discussions right uh, to ask from seniors right uh, for all those aspects you can follow some communities there are some very well known communities on discord like immunify is there uh, even securium is there securium you can follow securium discord and participate in races Right. Why? Uh, what are what are races? So, uh, Securium organized races where uh, anyone can participate, right? And uh, uh, it will be given uh, a set of contracts, of say, a quiz solutions or some study materials for you to learn, practice, and solve those challenges, right? So, based on results, or uh, I would say. Uh, some kind of uh, the points you actually get a leaderboard ranking and based on ranking you can actually get multiple rewards or even get a chance to uh, uh, to participate in or to uh, enroll yourself in a future project by uh, multiple companies right and uh, oh, someone is there just give just give me a second guys yeah sorry for that so I was talking about the communities, yes. Uh, yes, Imnify, Securium, and Blockchain pen testing. So Securium organizes races where you can participate and you get a, a ranking based on uh, how well you participated and how, how well you performed in the last race. And that will actually open doors for you to get into internships by multiple companies or get involved with multiple companies on projects right or like yeah multiple options are there so that is a good thing that you can that everyone can follow and yes that is one then there is uh, another i would say the best uh community out there uh, corresponding to each security so the name is itself each security on telegram uh, i will be mostly adding links here as well uh, for you to join that you can do and the last and uh, the most important stuff to be active on twitter why twitter uh, or you can be on discord as well but twitter i would say the best possible resource to uh, get access to the most latest attack vectors and i would say uh, get uh, interactive with the knowledge being shared by the well-known researchers right so Twitter is the most popular one, and I would recommend everyone to follow uh, some of their best leaders out there. And yes, get going. So with that, that actually covers up the roadmap. If you follow along uh, and if you follow this journey, uh, you will definitely be a smart contract writer. Not just a smart contract writer, but a good smart contract writer. Right. So that actually covers up uh, my, I would say, suggestions and uh, roadmap that I've built. So with that, uh, if anyone is having uh, any doubts, then I'm happy to answer. Yes. And talking about internships. So oh, uh, there are some internships that I can actually look forward so the first one is uh, Quillard's 
also providing uh, internship opportunities. So Colors is so Colors is where I'm working right now. So I'm right now a smart contract editor at Colors, and Colors is actually providing you some opportunities. Uh, considering you're having enough knowledge, right? At least you're at this stage. Uh, at this stage, that means you're able to uh, find solid bugs. You know the pitfalls. You have solved at least one of the challenges, CDF challenges, right? And yes, with that, you can actually apply. Uh, explore opportunities. You can actually apply here, right? Ethereum smart contract auditor. And if you're having a good knowledge, you probably get a job as an intern, right? Because right now we are uh, actually uh, seeking for full-time auditors, but we always uh, seek uh, good talent as well. So if you're having good knowledge uh, and uh, covered your journey until yet, all right, knowledge of Solidity, CTFs, and pitfalls, you're good to go and you can join it. Uh, there are other uh, uh, apprenticeship as well uh, that you can try. Uh, I remember one is from Trailobis. Trailobis actually gives you the opportunity to enroll for a apprenticeship. Let me just check if it's still there or not. Yes, it is there, right? So for that, but it requires to like, it requires you to have uh like a very good knowledge so this is only recommended uh until unless you're having all the attack vectors knowledge and all the stuff but yes the options are there but you can always prove your knowledge in your interviews and by solving tasks that you will be given uh while applying so it's actually a uh, kind of rounds so round one is kind of a interaction based on uh, your resume or what you have submitted round two is uh, where you are given a task where you're supposed to audit the smart contracts which are given so if good if found if you have found good uh, vulnerabilities you will be uh, moving for the round three and round three is where you will be having a technical interview so this is a generalized process and I would say uh, this is similar in most of the organizations, right? Even uh, Colorids as well. But we consider your talent uh, based on your stages. So we can actually uh, provide you an internship if you're having a good, good knowledge and good skill set. So with that, I think I'm done. And uh, if anyone is having at the last minute questions uh then we can so uh repo link so this is kind of private uh okay let me shut it down mm -hmm. let me make a repo okay someone is joining hey buddy you're pretty late so let me just share it for you Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Auditors roadmap. Right. So add a readme. Right, guys, just check whether it is public or not. Perfect. All right, uh, any other question? Can you give details on assembly code? 
Uh, no problem, guys. I hope uh, the chat will help you in your editing journey. And I hope I something uh, knowledgeable uh, was gained from this chat. Can you give details on assembly code and solidity and related resources? Yes, assembly is something that is also in the roadmap, but that can be actually covered from the doc itself. So solidity doc. Covers out something uh, called as inline assembly. Right? So you can go ahead and read about it. How inline assembly works. And let me just share them as well. As you have pointed it out, let me just add. Uh, where should I add? Mm -hmm. It comes on the solidity itself. So let me just add for your knowledge knowledge base let me add just in the knowledge base somewhere All right in my assembly one is there uh what else yes the op codes you must be uh needing awkward right so there is one ether om i would say right so it actually has all the op codes covered right and the purpose of them so this is something that will help you as well op codes because as you're writing assembly you will be knowing the op codes as well so this will help you and i would say yep uh, that will cover most of it and yes you're supposed to find blocks as per your need so uh, i will update uh if i find any other good block on assembly and opcodes anything else all right i think we are good to go so with that i would like to thank everyone for joining the call it was wonderful and thank you guys for connecting uh, it was a wonderful session and yes uh we'll see you uh, we'll see you later right we'll connect later on so thank you so much guys for joining and i hope uh, the session was helpful see you soon have a great day bye bye